Welcome back. We've heard a lot about entertainment, both from a decade ago and in the time since. And after a full two hands worth of years, it's still fun to look back at what now seems like a easier, simpler time. So we thought we'd round out the episode by diving more in depth into our personal favorite films from The Real Deal's premiere year, a time, remember, when you could have rented either of these flicks at the local blockbuster video. This is The Final Word. In my opinion, one of the best movies that came out in 2005 was The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, based off of the famous book by the British sci-fi author Douglas Adams. I say book, but the novel itself was really based off of material that originally had debuted as a BBC radio program in 1978 and a TV show in 1981. In fact, there were so many different versions of the story floating around, that was just one of the reasons why a feature film adaptation had been languishing in development hell for over two decades. But I'm really glad they were eventually able to put it to celluloid in 05. Among other things, the film served as my introduction to Martin Freeman, today a superstar for his roles in Sherlock, Fargo, and The Hobbit. But in Hitchhikers, though, Freeman plays Arthur Dent, every man from Earth who starts the day by trying to prevent the local highway commission from bulldozing his house. This turns out to be a minor problem, however, when an alien interstellar highway commission bulldozes his entire planet. This one, Earth, gone. But luckily, Arthur's best friend, played by rapper Moss Def, turns out to be an alien too and saves him just in the nick of time, which is only the beginning of a dimension-hopping intergalactic hitchhiking adventure. Lasers, robots, spaceships, and mice all make appearances. Oh, and it has Zoe Deschanel as the love interest. It's irreverent and silly, especially since most of the time all Arthur really wants is a good cup of tea. But it's very well done, too. Many of the larger aliens were created by the artists at the Jim Henson Creature Workshop, and their attention to detail shows. Well, actually, one of my favorite parts of Hitchhikers is its soundtrack by Jody Talbot, a dramatic, futuristic, cinematic trip of its own, and also featuring the memorable opening number, So Long and Thanks for All the Fish, sung by a chorus of hyper-intelligent dolphins. I love it so much, the CD's been in the bottom slot of my 5-CD stereo for, well, 10 years. So whether you're a hoopy frood who really knows where his towel is, or just a lover of quirky sci-fi flicks, I'd still recommend The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, even 10 years on. And for me, one of my favorite and more dramatic films from 2005 would have to be The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. Based on the coming-of-age novel series by Anne Brashares, Sisterhood focuses on a group of four best friends, Carmen, played by America Ferreira, Tibby, played by Amber Tamblin, Bridget, played by Br Blake Lively, and Lena, played by Alexis Bledel, who spend their first summer apart from each other and do their best to stay connected through a pair of flared jeans that mysteriously fits them all perfectly, despite having very different measurements. Despite the series to be thought for a young female audience, many critics agreed that the realistic portrayals of the lives of teenage girls gave sincerity to the main actress's performances and thought that the film that had the ability to capture hearts outside the female-centric demographic. Hmm. According to Box Office Mojo, Sisterhood opened at number five at the box office with $9.8 million on its opening weekend and had grossed over $42 million wor worldwide as of November 14, 2008. Throughout the film, many of the themes centering around family, relationships, loss, self-love and appreciation, and of course, the power of friendship, were presented well on screen as much as it did in print. Not to mention a great soundtrack with summary hits like Unwritten by Natasha Bedingfield, No Sleep Tonight by The Faders, and other emotional tunes like Five for Fighting's If God Made You that really tied in tones of growth and change displayed through young adulthood. As a 12-year-old at the time, Sisterhood definitely resonated in me in my time of adolescence as I could identify with each and every character in both their highest and lowest points of the story and taught me many important life lessons that have helped me to become the woman I am today. And that wraps up the show for this week and nearly wraps up 10 years of Real Deal Greatness. Make sure to stop by next week for our season finale, but in the meantime, be sure to check out our website, Facebook, and Twitter pages for news and updates on all things entertainment. I'm Connor Fack. And I'm Ramel Tadai. We'll see you next time.